All right. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we are here with the one and only Derrica Hamby of the Las Vegas Aces. How are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. Just trying to stay healthy, safe, and I'm happy, so I'm good. Perfect. We, we love to hear it, and we love to see your nice little sweatshirt. I still need to get yeah, it. Yeah, it's a famous. Everybody's getting it now, so. <laughs> I think they're still kind of hard to come by. I want some more, but I was gonna say, Arya, do you do you have one or no? No, I I have like the sweatshirt they gave. I think at the finals or the draft. It's the black. The media gets the less cool ones. The players get the cool ones. Yeah. So I need to step my game up. My God, but um, welcome you guys, and we're so happy. You know, we're we're trying something a little bit different. Um, We want to do a little bit of a film study, Um, and. I was a post player. I coached the post. I can't think of a better forward stretch for just talent in the WNBA to kind of do a film study on. So hence we have Erica with us. We're so happy you're here. Um, Just want to talk a little bit. I mean, you know, you've been in the league now. You're entering your sixth season. Mm -hmm. Drafted back in 2015. Can you kind of talk to us a little bit about the evolution of your game over the last five years or so? Um, I'd say, I think my game has been pretty similar as far as my skill set. Uh, I think people would say the last two or three years, I personally think after pregnancy, that my game has uh, been a little bit more like aggressive as far as, I think people could say I'm the hardest working player on the floor when I'm on the floor. Um, so I think that comes just from a uh, I think for me, like I said, giving birth and just having a little bit more appreciation for everything after having a kid. Uh, but I'd say as far as like my skill set, being able to stretch and run the floor extremely hard has always kind of been who I am. I, I have to ask, you know, a lot of people, when we've asked our followers who they want us to talk about, who's underrated in this league, your name comes up all the time. And I have to ask, you're, you've cemented yourself in the history of this league, not with just becoming the sixth woman of the year, but also the shot. I mean, it's yeah. just called the shot. Someone even got you tattooed on them. Did you ever <laughs> in your wildest dreams think that would happen when you were a kid, when you got in the league, that somebody was going to tattoo your shot on their body? No, honestly, when I was younger, basketball wasn't in my future. Like, I wanted to be a lawyer. I wanted to go to Boston College and – uh, so basketball wasn't even really on my mind until about my 10th grade year of high school. I started playing. Um, and even then, I wasn't that good, so I wasn't thinking WNBA. Um, I thought I was still going to go to law school and become a lawyer. And obviously, none of that happened. And I'm kind of obviously glad it didn't. But, um, yeah, no, I, I never imagined that. <laughs> I think it's, it's pretty – we're talking about evolution of a, of a game, <clears throat> excuse me, but yours in particular, I think, you know, anyone who's watching this is you're growing up as a, as a kid and, and you're, you're kind of filling out and, and your, your, your height mm-hmm. and everything is happening. Um, a lot of people don't talk about physicality uh, that, nat- that doesn't necessarily come natural to a female. Um, mm-hmm. at the age. And we're going to see some clips as we jump into our film study here um, in a few minutes about you, but you know, you do play with this extremely intense motor that probably goes unmatched, in my opinion, in, in the mm-hmm. WNBA. But the physicality of it, you know, you're able to do things against bigger, faster, stronger players that, um, you know, it's not easy for girls to kind of have at a younger age. Right. Yeah. I don't really feel like you could be physical with some of the best. I think it's, it's kind of it's funny because I don't lift arms and it's like an insider between like a lot of people that I know and, uh, when people first see me, they obviously say, like, yeah, you're, you look strong, but they don't realize that I, I'm, kind of, I'm pretty strong. And, like, even with Bill, when I first met him, he was kind of, like, picking on me, like, oh, you little scrawny thing. Like, and then by the end of the season, he was like, you're a lot stronger than I, like, imagined you were. Um, so I think that does catch people by surprise. Um, I think they expect me to be quick because I am pretty mobile. But I think that I surprise people with my strength. One more question. You know, you talked about the pregnancy. Um, that's a fascinating point. I want to, I want to, I want to learn more. Um, okay. You know, play defense motor. You go 100 miles an hour all the time. I wish I would have played like that because I, I, it's really hard to find from a from a from a collegiate standpoint to a professional mm-hmm. standpoint. Did that? Did having a child in your pregnancy? I mean, you you mentioned kind of the appreciation, but but how did, did that make you play harder? 
I don't think it wasn't like something in my head was like play harder. Like you have a kid. I think it's just something that just kind of changes in you. Um, I would say people always say I played hard, but like there was things I remember maybe like after pregnancy, like I was on the floor, like every possession in one game, just things like that, um, that a lot of people aren't willing to do. I don't know. I think it for me, that's just what's like triggered it for me, but not literally like, Oh, you had a child, like click it like that. It's just, you just change as a person, and I guess it just, it's just something that happened. <laughs> Whatever you are doing, we, we are absolutely loving it because you have been such a joy for women's basketball fans all over the country. Thank you. Thank you. Um, for so many reasons. So it's just important for us to highlight you and your game. Um, and let's jump into it. You know, we're, we're going to talk some X's and O's. <laughs> we're going to put on a little bit of film. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll take the reins of this so you guys watch as we uh, jump into kind of a highlight, um, when you guys had played Atlanta from okay. August of last year. Now this first kind of clip, as we let this roll, a lot of this is gonna be some high-low action. You know, mm -hmm. you wanna explain to the fans, you know, the, the philosophy of Las Vegas. Obviously you have Bill Ambeer, you've got a little bit of an old school philosophy and, and kind of this high-low game. And, yeah, the post player, he loves his post players. <laughs> too which is part of the reason I love watching you guys from so many um, aspects but yeah feel free to share as much or as little okay. as, as we as we kind of get going here I mean you, you, the best thing I love about your game is you can play from the inside out you know you mm -hmm. can the best of them you can face up as we just saw there but as we get into this we see you down here on the block working for great right. um, obviously Liz Cambage up here from a trail position um, is this something you guys practice a ton of this this kind um, of yeah so mostly with asia and liz they love the high low but obviously in this possession she kind of sagged off uh liz will shoot that normally but she didn't uh she was she was looking to pass to me i got it in and elizabeth williams is a, one of the best defenders in our league and she's a shot blocker so i knew i had to pump fake on her to try to get her up and get around her uh, I'd say if you look at most of my post moves, it involves me going around people. You never really see me just kind of like overpower through bigger defenders. Um, so yeah, and then also people know I love to go right and I kind of shocked them. I guess I went back left. Um, well, that's a great point to bring up there. You know, on a lot of scouting reports, teams will talk. Yeah, it says I'm only right-handed, but I can use my left every once in a while. I don't have to, I won't, but obviously I needed to in that case. Well, then this next one, you know, the thing that makes you such a threat is you're so versatile. You know, you can stretch the floor, you can score it from really all three levels. Um, has that always been the case with your game, your ability to shoot the three like this? Um, yeah, I've always shot in it. Um, I don't necessarily, I mean, I probably average about 30 to 35%, but I'm a threat. I can either hit three or three or I'll go 0 of two. So uh, I think people definitely respect it enough to where they have to come out and guard me. And that's usually how I end up getting by people and getting to the basket, because they do respect my shot enough. But um, it's something this past season that I worked on a little bit more because I knew that I was gonna possibly have to play the three and to come in the future as well. So it's something I'm working on. I would say that's probably the one aspect of my game I'm probably gonna have to lock in on a little bit more. Okay. Just being consistent with it. Yeah, we'll, we'll definitely dive into that a little bit more. We want to talk about things that you feel like you've needed to work on more this offseason. That's a great point. Mm -hmm. um, the next one, I mean, doing one of the things that you do best, your ability to run the floor. I mean. Yeah. It's, it's Funny thing. You can see like a switch go off in your mind. Like, watch. As soon as the possession yeah. starts, you just hit this gear. Go. And <laughs> you are on a mission to beat anyone and everyone down the floor every single time. This is funny because I remember that possession. Uh, I was, Asia had been out a while and I'd been playing like 40 minutes a game for like five games and I was tired. I was dog tired. I remember it, but I'm normally the first one down the floor in every instance. And then I was like, I gotta go, I gotta go. But my legs were so heavy. I can tell watching this that my legs were super heavy and I was still just trying to run as hard as I could. But I, yeah, you still, but you still beat everybody down the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's I, everybody can always count on me to be the first one down the floor. Even when uh, I think it's funny that sometimes like they'll get a steal and it'll be like a breakaway layup maybe for them, but I just run and then like I'm ahead of them. They're like, oh crap, like I gotta pass it. <laughs> that has so. to be a part too. You know, if 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 they've got you, 
from a transition standpoint, they've got to get back because you're, you're bringing the heat. Absolutely. Yeah. Was this something uh, I coach college basketball? I, I coach primarily the post players and I was, I would tell them rim to rim every mm -hmm. single time, like beat your man down the floor, especially if you have the mobility, you know, as a player like you, if you're not running the floor, you're missing out on, countless you, buckets, yeah. you know, is that something that was preached to you from early your time at Wake Forest? Well, so before I played basketball, I played softball, and I was a little bit like Bambi, like, I don't know what switched for me, like with my feet. Uh, I would say I'm pretty quick, like A to B. And um, I just like to run, like even in college, they would punish me with running. And I kind of be like, well, this is fun. Like, so, <laughs> cause I didn't mind running, you know, like we'd have conditioning drills and I'd be the first one. Like they had to change my times to do the point guard time because I'd have like a, like a certain amount of time left over and just wasn't, it was easy for me at that point. Um, so I just like to run. Like, I don't, it's just been who I am. Uh, yeah. Well, I love it. I absolutely love it. This next play, sorry guys, we, we got talking about her running quite a bit, but I, I love it. <laughs> Obviously very huge aspect of your game. This next one, a little, little bit of technicality here. You don't even realize you're doing it. Um, you were going to see Kelsey Plum's going to kind of penetrate middle here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you're naturally going to space out to this short corner. Right. Um, this is taught at a lot of levels, people call them eye cuts, people just call it spacing the floor. Yeah. Or they go under to the back side of the rim. Okay, so as we see it, Plum drives, you space right there to that little 15 foot. Mm -hmm. That is taught. That's something that you have drilled through your career, right? Right, yeah, I've gotten in trouble for not doing it a few times. Uh, so yeah, I, yeah, I've learned to do it. I think a lot of other, some coaches teach for you to go under like I think overseas they teach us to go under to like get the drop off layup but I think I'm versatile enough that I could space that way as well. Well and I think what's what, ma what makes you such a threat from this short corners obviously you can knock down that shot that's, mm -hmm. that's the fourth shot for you but you can do what you did here you, you've got you've got a poor close out and you're able to penetrate middle drive it to the basket you, you yeah contact. um and I mean do, do you guys drill that a lot in practice that that driving it from this the 15 foot mark uh, Bill would have probably told me to shoot it, but I'm a drive first player. So naturally my instinct is to drive some, I mean, if you look at other clips of me, I'll probably drive and there'll be three people in the paint and I'll still drive. So naturally people should probably close out short on me to force me to shoot it a few times first. Uh, cause I am so strong going in the basket, but yeah, like I think normally they would have preferred me shoot that, but Obviously, my first instinct is to drive. So I'm curious. She was the fourth out. I drove by. I'm I'm curious on that. At what point do you decide? Oh, I'm going with my pump move and and take it to the hoop. Or do you say like, what is it a footing thing? Is it something you see, or is it your mentality before you even get the ball? I'm usually a predetermined player. I kind of have my move before it even comes. It, it it's gotten me in trouble a few times. Uh, to where I'll do a move and it, I won't really necessarily have it, but. Like I said, like I'm a driver, so I want to drive first. And well, and you obviously navigate well in traffic and with yeah, you thrive really with multiple people around you. We'll we'll get into that here in this next clip. Um, you know, here you are running the floor some more, doing what you do, first one down. But what I love about this play, and we're going to see a lot of different views of it, is we talk about <laughs> contact. You know, not only are you the first one down the floor, you cause that deflection. You're doing everything on this play, mm -hmm. but I. Think underestimate the ability to finish with just hits all over you left and right right you're getting pummeled here from behind on the side um talk to us about just that and developing that in your game yeah I think over time I've had to learn that especially you never know with refs what you're going to get each game uh just that you got to finish through contact regardless because you might not get the foul call uh I think early on in my career I was looking for the foul call before anything else. Uh, but I think I've learned that just, you just got to put the hole in the basket. And I think that's helped me a lot, even with the refs, because I think the refs respect me. I don't, I don't say much to them, you know, I just play, play hard. And later in my career, I'd say the last two seasons, they've kind of been on my side. <laughs> so it helps. I keep my mouth shut. I just play through contact. Every once in a while, I'll say, look ref, like I'll have, cause I bruise easily and I, I'm light. So 
I get scratches and stuff. You can see them like fairly well. And I'll be like, look ref, like I really honestly haven't said anything to you all game, but come on now, like. Yeah. Well, and after that, I'll get call after call after call. So. <laughs> I mean, you bring up, you bring up a great point. We could talk about some of your teammates and other people in the league who love to yeah. talk about missed calls. And, and we could talk about the frustrations with referees, especially in the WNBA until the cows come <laughs> home. I do think there is something to be said about, um, you know, the respect of a player like you, who, you know, mm -hmm. you, you, you just kind of do your job. You go to work. You don't make a huge deal out of maybe a no call here, no call there. But if you do open your mouth. It means I'm serious. Yeah. Exactly. exactly. I remember exactly. one game uh, it was against Seattle, at Seattle, and we were, the game was really close. Um, I think we might've been down one and I got a steal and I went for a layup and Jordan Canada fouled me, like snatched my arm down and they didn't call it. I, I missed the layup. And, you know, I, during the game, I was like, you got to call that. I went off, I, I kind of went off on him. He was like, go back to your bench, blah, blah, blah. And then after the game, he came and apologized to me. He was like, I'll never question you again. He was like, you're right. And I was like, well, we lost, but thanks. <laughs> <laughs> so, I appreciate it anyway. Um, yeah. Last clip here, a little bit of an inside out game. I have a few questions. Aria, feel free to chime in. Um, you know, a lot, a lot of, <laughs> Playing with a, a player like Liz Cambage has got mm -hmm. to be a way. I mean, you can tell from this clip in particular, as soon as the ball comes in, she demands a double team. Yeah, um, yeah and that person's like, sagging off. Yeah, like a triple team. I mean, so Liz spends a lot of time on the perimeter, in, in my opinion, or even the high post at times. But when she's mm -hmm. down, <laughs> it has to be, you know, are, are you guys being told, get, get her the ball? Like, we have to play through her touches, great. Right? Yeah, her and Asia both, uh, obviously. And I think for our team, it's a little bit easier when we only have one of them in the game because, I mean, there's three people right now that are pretty much could all shoot the ball right now, Plum, Kayla, and me. And the spacing is always really good because they do demand so much attention. Um, so we're able to open up. And I think towards it, I think in the past, she's – when she was in Dallas, uh, she might not have been as comfortable or trusting to make a play like this. She probably would have just shot in it anyways. But I think Bill has talked to her a lot. And towards the end of the season, you could see she was much more comfortable with making those passes. And I'm sure it's some type of stat that, like, after maybe All-Star, her assists probably went up a lot. So, um, well, yeah, I'm in rhythm. I, I was hot at that point already in the game. And I'm in rhythm. I just shot it. I didn't that's, even hesitate. I was going to say, that's, a, that's as pure of a shot as we could possibly have. And I think yeah. people talk a little bit about this. I mean, as a post player, getting the ball down on the block like this um, and drilling, playing against a trap. You know, you guys probably spend a lot of time um, in practice or with mm -hmm. practice guides, with pads, um, being able to make this play. This is not an easy play when you've got two yeah. or three. She's got size, but – yourself into this position as well because you oh it's hard <laughs> especially with in the WNBA like I mean overseas I think we all probably get double team and triple team but you have three elite players obviously at this level coming at you uh so I haven't been doubled in the WNBA yet but uh actually one game I got doubled but I can imagine every game it's difficult so what she does her in Asia is incredible well, well, we will stop it with the film there, get it back to our view. I, I think, what are some things this off season um, mm -hmm. that you really have felt like you've needed to improve on? I know you talked about shooting. What is it? Is it shooting from the inside out like that? Is it shooting, being able to come off a screen and shoot, shooting off the drum? Well, I've talked with Bill about it just because <coughs> with our team and our dynamic, uh, our makeup, obviously it's difficult to – have all three of us on the floor at one time. So he's got it because we're all three post players, but three of your four leading scores. And um, so I think he's had to put me at the three, but he doesn't want to obviously turn me into a guard because then that takes away my game. Um, but I've done it the last few games. I think the last game was Washington. I played the three and, uh, and then Chicago game, I played the three. So it's been, I think it's good for us. I think it works. Um, I've asked him, should I work on my ball handling? And he's like, no, like, you just need to be able to shoot three. Um, 
I don't necessarily think I'll be coming off too many screens, maybe one or two dribbles. So I'd say dribbling, um, at least enough to get up the court by myself, I guess, transition. Um, shooting. Yeah, I'd say that's it. But right now I'm resting, so. <laughs> What's a, I'm curious for you, what's some personal goals? Obviously, you won sixth woman of the year this past season, but what's some personal goals? You know, we always hear about players setting up lofty goals for themselves to try and accomplish things for their career. What do, what do you do to uh, self-motivate? Um, my family, but I have a daughter now, so she motivates me a lot. For me, uh, I'd say, obviously, to, to win a championship is probably anybody's goal in the WNBA. Uh, if that come, if I can be an all-star, that'd be nice, but it's not like a championship is most important to me, you know? So, uh, obviously I'm on a team where we have a lot of talent. So I've kind of sacrificed that possibility just a little bit. I mean, I could have still gotten it this year, but, um, when I came back to Vegas, it was like, okay, you're going to come off the bench, but we still can have a really good team. And I knew that. So it was like, do that or go to like another team, be a star player. But uh, obviously. Okay, that brings up yeah, good points. Yeah. Did you watch The Last Dance on Sunday night? Yeah, I did. Okay. You know, I'm Scott Scottie Pippen. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes, I said that. I, I am Scottie Pippen. <laughs> I think we have got to talk about this because we live in a day and age where it's about me, right? About me, 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 me. What can everyone do for me? And to find a truly humble, selfless person that has the skill who might sacrifice a starting position or maybe some minutes or maybe being that star on a different mm -hmm. team um you know is really unique and really special you have such a humbleness to you that shows but yet you're so talented and so i'm just talk a little bit about your mentality and just why why are you the way you are <laughs> Ah, uh, probably has a lot to do with my mother, uh, if I had to guess, just the way I was raised. But I don't know. I think I've always been a selfless person, even off the court. I think people will tell you when they, if you ask them to describe me, they would say her heart is like, it's huge. So um, I don't like to cause trouble and stuff like that. So I kind of just do what I'm told and stay out of the way. Um, so yeah, I don't know. I mean, I'm thankful that I do have those those traits. They've got me a long way. But at this point in my career, like, I'm happy. I'm in a good situation. I know I'm saying I'm Scotty, but, like, I still make good money. And yeah. um, I, I think Bill has learned to love me a little bit more. So <laughs> that's nice. But uh, I think he's told me I, we know that my value on this team is, is immensable. So. Well, and I think, you know, we talk about – a two-part thing. I, I have my thoughts about Las Vegas, trying to figure out how all these pieces fit, how this team mm -hmm. goes together. I I believe if you're not on this team, Vegas does not win a championship. What do you think, Aria? Oh, I, I completely agree with that. I mean, I think you're an unsung hero that you finally started to kind of get the limelight, which you've probably deserved for more years than people are giving mm -hmm. you attention for. I mean, we, like we talked about at the beginning, when, when we reach out to the fans and the fans say – or we say to them, you know, who's someone who's not getting enough credit, who's really the motor? Honestly, in the W, someone that, that comes to mind, maybe not playing style-wise, but Rebecca Brunson and you have a lot mm -hmm. of similarities, a lot of that hustle, a lot of finishing in contact, and a lot of that drive. Yeah, doing yeah. whatever it takes to make your team win a championship. Um, what, what WNBA comparisons have you gotten in the past, actually? I'm curious. Uh... I don't know. She's unique. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to think uh, about when I got drafted, who they kind of thought I would be like. Well, who did you, um, who did you idolize growing up? Um, I wouldn't say idolize, but I had a few favorite players, uh, but they weren't on the women's side. <laughs> Cause I didn't play, I didn't play basketball till late so I didn't really know about the WNBA and uh, until my junior year of college I wasn't really expecting to play at the next level so yeah but I think uh as I've gotten older I think most of our fours are similar similar like Della Don, Stewie, uh, Neca, Candice I think we all kind of have similarities um and just that stretch four I think is 
becoming a more popular position. Um, usually every night, the best player on the floor is the four. So, um, yeah, we're mismatched problems. That's that's the that's the trend in the league these days. I mean, it's yeah. crazy. Like you being able to do a little bit of everything what? at our size. My, my last question before I let Aria finish up and wrap up. Um, what I mean, what does Vegas have to do? What do you guys have to do um, to take that next jump from what you really built on last year? Right. Be in that contention conversation, that that finals conversation. What do you guys have to do to um, take the next step? I think we have to continue our defense. I think Angel, adding Angel helps uh, on the defensive end. Um, I think we just have to stay consistent. I think you'll see, like, if you look at our season last year, we were really high, and then we went on the stretch where we lost, like, I don't know, 7 of 11 maybe, or that kind of hurt us towards the end, towards playoffs. But I think we just got to be consistent. I think uh, come playoffs, we kind of figured out the whole Liz and Asia, because Asia was out when we were on that run, and then we stuck her back in, as we should, but we stuck her back in, and then we kind of were trying to figure it all out again because she had been out so long. But I think just being consistent, I think obviously Liz has another year under her belt uh, in Asia, and I think he, Bill's going to have to figure out how to have us all on the floor at once. <laughs> um, if we can all play together, Angel at the three, uh, me or me at the three, Angel two, four, five. Crazy, that's a we crazy. We have you just line up, yeah, ever probably. Go real big. And so I think that's why it's going to be important for me to be able to hit that three consistently um, for spacing purposes. And yeah, I think, yeah. I so I just want one question um, to wrap up real quick. What do you think of something about your your Aces team that goes? unnoticed it's something that not enough people talk about because I'm sure you've got a few things that pop to your mind I know a lot of times we just talk about certain things when it comes to the teams something that goes underrated about this Las Vegas Aces team I think we're funny <laughs> Cindy's gone now though so that kind of takes a little bit of it away but I'll, I'll take the reins and uh, leave the squad in funniness are you but, gonna uh, leave the, we... the champ am I the new funny champ <laughs> <laughs> We'll just say yes, but <laughs> I think um, we're close. Uh, we we would say argue that like off the court we were pretty all, we were all pretty close. Um, like we had good chemistry, so it's just about getting it on the court. And like I said, we had ups and downs, but I think we uh, towards the end we figured it out. But it was obviously it's kind of too late. So. Well, we appreciate your time. Thank you so much. I know no, I'm sure you're busy with the kid. Thank you so much. Actually, I have one more question. Has your daughter stepped up and been like, Mom, what happened in this game? Has she started critiquing your game yet? Not yet. She's, uh, she's three, so she just turned three in February. She's just now kind of understanding, like, I go to work. She knows, like, what I'm doing. She says mommy shoots, but she hasn't understood, like, oh, mommy's putting the ball in the basket. Like, this is two points uh, or anything like that. But she picks up the basketball now, and she wants to go with me to the gym. Aww. But she, uh, I'm trying to think the only thing she says. She's like, uh, she says, I asked her if she wants to play like me. And she's like, yes. Uh, she hasn't, she hasn't quite, she understands it, but not obviously at a level where she can count points and stuff like that. But she claps when everybody else is clapping. So she gets that point. She loves to sing the Star Spangled Banner. So Aww. she like, we get for every game. She's like this. <laughs> and she doesn't really know, but. Um, but I've been teaching her how to sing it, so because I'm going to try to get her to sing it uh, in one of the games in the next season. So yeah. yes. that's like what we're working on. But um, yeah, she understands it, but not not really. Hey, that's that's breaking news right there. You know, <laughs> headlining. She's going to have her name ahead of yours on the marquee yeah. lights. You know, sing the Star Spangled Banner. She's talented. She's 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 got a lot of stuff under her belt right now, but she. Um, yeah, she's special. Oh, that's amazing. We love to hear that type of stuff. I used to be a preschool teacher for many years. So I okay. three three to five is the perfect age because they have mm -hmm. that personality, but they're still so freaking cute that like whatever they do, yeah, you're just like, like oh yeah. When she has an attitude and stuff, we're just like oh. Right, exactly. Once <laughs> once they hit five, it's like, oh man, now you're a real person and like it's less cute. <laughs> yeah, she's she speaks so well and I was like, uh, she's not here right now. She's with uh, her dad. But 
they're back in Georgia. And she was like, mommy, can you get on the airplane and come and pick me up and then go to grandma's house and pack my suitcase and then get back on the airplane and go to Vegas. And she's three, like, <laughs> but she under, she knows I'm in Vegas. Or when I was, when we were in Italy, she's like, we're in Italy. Like we gotta get on a plane and go home. So she, she's really intelligent. It's crazy. She can spell her name and like write it. And she's, oh, she's only three, so. I got my hands full. Yeah, watch (laughs) out. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we're so appreciative of your time. Thank you so much. And uh, best of luck. And uh, we're looking forward to hopefully this season. Thank you, guys. Thank you.